Hello to all students. Today we are discussing about the events in sexual reproduction. It is a part of the chapter 1 of NCRT that is the reproduction in organism and it's very very important. After attainment of the maturity, after attainment of the maturity, what happens that all sexually reproducing organisms exhibit some events and processes that are remark that are having remarkable fundamental similarity means what i want to say as soon as the sexually reproducing organisms attain maturity they undergo certain events and process which are somewhat similar in all organisms they are having fundamental similarity though they are different organisms but then also if we talk about the reproduction then they have fundamental similarity. So it is written that even though the structures associated with the sexual reproduction are indeed very different. Again I am repeating even though the structures associated with the sexual reproduction are indeed very different. right? Though they are having different reproductive structures but then also they are having fundamental similarities. Okay, And if we talk about the events in the sexual reproduction then they are grouped in three stages okay if we want to study the events which occur in uh, or during the sexual reproduction then they are grouped in how many stages three stages and all three stages are very very important number one is pre-fertilization or pre-fertilization events number two is fertilization events number three is post-fertilization events okay let's start with the pre-fertilization events as the name is indicating pre-fertilization means all those events which occur prior to the process of fertilization means all those events which occur before the process of the fertilization are studied under pre-fertilization events and the two main pre-fertilization events are the two main pre-fertilization events are one is very important known as the gametogenesis and another is known as the gamete transfer okay gametogenesis and gamete transfer so we are starting today with the gametogenesis as the name is indicating gametogenesis gameto means gamete genesis means formation okay so it refers to the process of formation of gametes okay gametogenesis means the process of formation of gametes and we know very well that in sexually reproducing organisms two types of the gametes are produced one is known as the male gamete another is known as the female gamete okay but before starting this process of gametogenesis you must know that gametes are always haploid cells means what the thing you have to remember is that that gametes are always haploid cells means the gametes will be having only one set of chromosome they will be having only one set of chromosome and one set of the chromosome is denoted by n okay now if I talk about the categories of the gametes, if I talk about the categories of the gametes, then the gametes are categorized into two groups. One is known as the isogametes, another are known as the heterogametes. Okay, so how many categories of gametes are there? Two uh, categories isogametes, which are also called as the homogametes. Iso means same, means homogametes, and heterogametes means different types. Okay, hetero means different. Okay, now see here. Isogametes. What are isogametes? As the name is indicating, when the fusing gametes are morphologically similar, when the two fusing gametes are exactly similar, morphologically they are exactly similar. Okay, means you cannot distinguish between the male and the female gamete because they are so much similar, right, that we cannot distinguish it. So when the fusing gametes, when the two fusing gametes are morphologically similar, then they are called as homogametes. And these isogametes or the homogametes are especially found in some algae and fungi. Especially they are found in algae and uh, fungi. And these isogametes are not a common type of the gametes. They are rarely found. If we compare that which type of the gametes are found more than the heterogametes are found in maximum organisms but in some algae and fungi isogametes are found say for if i 
talk about ten uh, examples of the algae, then the best example of the algae are the Cladophora and the Eulothrix, and also some species of Chlamydomonas, and also some species of Chlamydomonas. Okay, so the two best examples of the homogametes or the isogametes of the algae are Cladophora and Eulothrix. Say for I have uh, drawn a diagram here of Cladophora algae of Cladophora algae. And in this Cladophora algae, I have made two gametes. One is known as the male gamete, another is known as the female gamete. But see that these two gametes are so much morphologically similar that you cannot identify that which is the male gamete or which is the female gamete. Okay, so it is an example of your NCRT class 12th. Okay, that is known as the Cladophora. And in Eulothrix also, some ty such type of the isogametes are formed and in some species of Chlamydomonas. Now, I have tried to give some extra examples also other than the NCRTs and that is the fungi. Fungi also have the isogametes, say for if you have heard about the Rhizopus and Syncytrium, Syncytrium and Rhizopus. Syncytrium and Rhizopus are the two fungi which have uh, the homogametes or the isogametes. Okay? Now coming to the more coming to the more common type of the gametes which are called as the heterogametes as the name is indicating when the two fusing gametes when the fusing gametes are morphologically distinct you can easily identify that which is a male gamete and which is a female gamete okay so then they are called as heterogametes then they are called as heterogametes okay means you can identify between a male gamete and a female gamete say for here it is the female gamete say for this is the female gamete, this is the male gamete, this is the female gamete, this is the male gamete, okay. So it is a feature of majority of sexually reproducing organism. It is the feature of majority of sexually reproducing organism. Say for, I have quoted some examples of algae also in which heterogametes are found. It's not necessary that all the algae are having the homogametes or the isogametes. I have written here some algae. It means some algae, some algae may have heterogametes also, say for fucus, volvox and cara. I have quoted three examples here. Fucus, volvox and cara. Say for, I have drawn the diagram of the heterogametes found in the fucus where you can see that this is the female gamete, this is the male gamete. Okay. So, Fucus is the example given in your NCRT class 12th and Volvox and the Cara are the other examples of the algae which have heterogametes. Now, what you can see here that female gamete is non-motile, male gamete is motile, you can see the flagellas and all, okay. Now, female gamete is always big in size, male gamete is small in size. Female gamete has enough quantity of stored food material, male gamete has less quantity of stored food material, okay. If I talk about the homo sapiens, that is the human beings, so we are also sexually reproducing organism and we also have heterogametes, you know very well that the female gamete is called as the egg or the ovum, egg or the ovum and the male gamete and the male gamete and the male gamete is called as the sperm. Again, we know very well that male gamete is having the tail and it is motile and female gamete is not having the tail, so it is non-motile. Fine. Not only this, majority of the sexually reproducing organism such as bryophytes, pteridophytes, gymnosperms, angiosperms, all the major, okay, uh, uh, the plants, bryophytes, pteridophytes, gymnosperm, angiosperm, all are having heterogametes. Okay. Achha, one more thing. In such organisms, we know very well that male and female gametes are distinct. So in such organism, male gamete is called as anthrozoid. Male gamete is called as anthrozoid or sperm. Why we have used these two terms? Now, if I talk about the homo sapiens or the human beings, then we never say the anthrozoid. For the human beings, for the male gamete, we use the term sperm. But if I talk about the bryophytes, if I talk about the bryophytes, if I talk about the pteridophytes, then in that conditions, we are not using the term sperms and all. We use the term anthrozoid. So the male gamete can be used, uh, the male gamete can be uh, uh, can be called it as anthrozoids or sperm. Remember this thing. 
and the female gamete and the female gamete is called as egg or ovum female gamete female gamete is called as the egg or the ovum female gamete is called as the egg or ovum so in this video we have discussed a part of the gametogenesis okay again i am repeating today we have started the pre fertilization events and pre fertilization events are of two types gametogenesis and gamete transfer in this gametogenesis right we have started a small part today the rest of the part will be discussing in the next video and in each video for maintaining the notes i am giving you the screenshot at the end of the video so you can maintain your notes okay so keep uh, watching my videos thanks a lot